Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, God bless you. I hope everything is going well. Praise God. So what's been on my heart for the past couple of days, uh, actually what the Father has put on my heart the other day and I've been thinking about and um, something that he's really driven deeper into my heart and given me even more revelation about and teaching me more about really that's been on my heart is something that um, I want to show you and talk to you about real fast. And I'm just going to read from Matthew chapter 5, verse 46. Well, actually what it is, it's, it's mercy. Mercy is what he's been talking about, but I just want to read from the Word of God and see what the Bible has to say about it. But before I do, I want to say that it's, um, you know, we're all trying to strive to be like Christ. But this one particular area of mercy is something that not a lot of people explain and teach about in church. But I want to see what, let's see what Jesus has to say about it. And um, so in Matthew chapter 5, verse 46, he says, For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only or your friends only, what, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors or the Gentiles do, do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. Okay, now, a lot of people will read that and they say, well, be perfect just as your heavenly Father, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, none of us can be, be perfect, right? Right, no, none of us are, can be perfect, and we, we can't be perfect in any, just about any area. But this one area, when he says, be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect, I'm going to show you what exactly he's talking about. So if we go to Luke chapter Luke chapter 7, you got to compare scripture with scripture to see what he's saying. He's not talking about every area because the thing is we can't be perfect in every area, but we can be perfect in this one area. And I'm pretty sure you didn't know this because pastors and teachers don't and, and probably you aren't paying attention to the word and reading carefully. But we got to read it carefully. So Luke chapter 6, verse 36, he says, actually verse 35, he says, But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Verse 36. Now this is the Beatitudes in Luke, same thing that was in Matthew. But in verse 36, he says, Therefore, be merciful just as your heavenly father is also merciful. So when he says right here in verse 48, Matthew 5, 48, therefore you shall be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. He's talking about mercy. He says right here, be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful. So when you compare the two scriptures in Matthew 5 and then Luke chapter 6, you will see when he mentions being perfect, he's talking about in the area of mercy. So brothers and sisters, this one area of mercy, there's a one, there's one area in the Christian life that we can be perfect at. And this is what I want to encourage you and in, 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 try to motivate you to, from the scriptures, to strive to have in your life is a, a thing called mercy. We can't become perfect in patience. We can't become perfect in a lot of different other things and selfishness and pride because those roots go deep and we'll only become fully like Christ when we see him one day. And actually, I'm going to show you with that in scripture also. In 1 John 1, 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, he says right here, um, Okay, First John chapter 3, verse 2, he says, But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So he says right here, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. We will be completely like Christ. But as we walk in this flesh, as we walk and live in this world right now, we won't be completely like Christ. But this one area, we can be like Christ. We can be, we can be like Christ. We can per perfect ourselves in this one area, and that's mercy. He says, be merciful. He doesn't say be a little bit merciful. He doesn't say uh, try to be merciful. He says, be merciful just as your heavenly Father is merciful. And then in Matthew, he tells us that to be, um, therefore you shall be perfect as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. So when it comes to mercy, brothers and sisters, this is something that, you know, 
of course, we got to ask the Holy Spirit to drive it on our heart and make us uh, merciful and patient with patient with other people. But to understand how we can be merciful, you got to understand something. First is you got to understand that God is merciful to you. God was merciful to you by sending his son and dying on the cross and feeling the pain of eternal suffering for you and not giving you the suffering, not giving you the punishment of your sins. He's merciful to you by taking your punishment. He's been, he was merciful to you by forgiving you. So f the first thing is understanding is how much you've been forgiven. And to grow in this area, that's the first thing you must understand is that Christ was merciful to you. And this will generate mercy toward other people. This will generate in your heart automatic, uh, you know, when somebody does something, for example, that make that that you come hard on them, like, man, why did you do that? Why did you you know, God doesn't do that with us. You know, he he when he took our punishment, he his wrath and his anger was ceased. And he's very merciful with us now, especially now. When we do something wrong, he doesn't just jump on us. Why did you do that? I can't believe you did that. You just messed this up. He doesn't condemn us. Romans 8, chapter 1. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There's, there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when it comes to mercy, brothers and sisters, we ought to do the same as Christ does with us. So when somebody does something that's wrong or they mess something up, think in that moment. Okay, all the things I've done, things I've messed up, and how God took my punishment, and how He's not just and now he, He's how He's not jumping on me. Let me not jump on them. You know, that's just one example. And there's so many other things that people do. There's so many because so many so many different people in this world, and so many different characters and personalities, and things that may irritate us, or things that may agitate us, or things that may not be how we want it. But one area. This thing called mercy will, will bring and help in so many areas of not if causing not causing problems. Will help help in so many areas of resolving problems and um, not starting a lot of problems. Because a lot of problems are started because we're not we're not showing patience and we're not we're automatically just jumping on someone for doing something that's wrong. So, you know, and you have to understand something. You know, God, he looks at us, our father, which is in heaven. He looks at us and he sees a lot of weaknesses within us. And he's merciful with us and he gives us a chance. So we ought to do the same thing with other people. Understand and know that certain people have other weaknesses or maybe they have sin. If you look at sin as a disease, if you look at it as a cancer, if you look at it, look at sin as a sickness, that'll give you. Let me tell you something that'll help you not get angry with that person. That'll help you have mercy with that person or whoever it is or people. Because if someone is in the hospital and they have a disease and they're dying of it, you don't get angry at them. You don't chop down on them. Why do you have this? Why do you? So if you look at sin and defects in people as, as this disease that's eating them away, That'll help you also have mercy. And that's, that'll also have, help you have patience and a bunch of other things. My brothers and sisters, this is one area that God expects in our heart. Because of what he's done for us, we ought to do to other people. And that's why he says in the previous verse, he says, uh, and if you greet those, greet your, greet your brother and only what more that, okay, what do you do more than others? Don't the tax collectors do so? And then the other thing is, you know, if you're kind to those who are kind to you and things like that. But there's so many evil, so much evil and so much wickedness in this world, brothers and sisters. We must, we must, we must, we must, we must be merciful and let things slide. Just in layman's terms, let certain things slide. If you see someone is deserving of something, oh man, they did that, they really deserve that. Let it slide. 99.9% .9 of things that we're unmerciful toward people about, you know what I mean? It's, it's not even it, it's not even a big deal. In light of eternity, it's not a big deal. But God wants us to have this so we can show his heart to other people. Our Father, which is in heaven, 
showing his glory through us by being merciful and patient in letting things go with other people. So be perfect as your father's heaven is imperfect. Strive for mercy. You can, you can, you can become perfect in this area. He, he expects it. He, if you ask his Holy Spirit to help you, you can become perfect in this area. All the other areas, I just read First John chapter two, chapter 3, verse 2. We won't be like Christ 100%. But in this area, we can. Be merciful. Be patient. But in the area of mercy, let things go. And think about how much God has been merciful to you. And how much he's let most of your crap or your stuff that you've done wrong. Big stuff. Sins. Horrible sins in the past life. And things that you've done that's messed up how much he's forgiven you and let it slide and um, just doesn't remember it. So think about that next time, next time you're tempted to be unmerciful to somebody. In Jesus' name, God bless you and study up, read the scriptures and remember, have mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.